Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to uh, Uber Eats clone app. And uh, in last couple of videos, we were building the microservices. Now in this video, we are going to just uh, clean up a couple of things and then we will build, uh, we will just move into the front end and we will build a landing page. We will build a restaurant search and all, all sort of things which uh, we don't have right now. So we have only just a landing page, uh, basic landing page and then just uh, dashboard admin for the restaurant admins so now our couple of videos future couple of videos i'm going to dedicate uh, towards the front end where we are going to integrate react with redux toolkit and in the next gs application which we are building there how we can do the authentication using a simple username password and i'm also planning to add a google authentication using google provider we are not using firebase we are not using auth0 we built our own user service so let's see how we can just add on this uh, google provider like uh, we can use this this simple node.js passport modules those passport modules like google passport uh, twitter passport facebook passport modules and we will just create a strategies in the nest gs app which can allow us to log in through the facebook through the google and all our authentication service will adopt those changes so first of all uh, i just reorganized a couple of things because now we have lots of services so we know we need to see on which port uh, which particular service is working on running on proxy 3001 user service to restaurant service 3456 right and how i'm doing it just a simple update your env file 3004 source main.ts get the port from the env first similarly for the delivery service 3005 get the port from the env first simple right process.env.port so we can just change the port for these individual services and these services are running on those different ports so if you can see this is my which service service this is my user service you can call auth service this is my restaurant service api view on restaurant and this looks like card service right so we have we can see at least three services up and running now we need to see how we are doing proxy so if you remember we were cre we have created these proxy middlewares auth middleware card delivery order and restaurant for each and every microservice there will be a one middleware auth middleware what it is doing is whenever the request is coming something like this it will forward that to this target this is where our apis are running it is just like uh, we wanted to just have one endpoint for the front end to hit any of the respective service and we are doing internal routing or you can say the internal forwarding here so for front end uh, the api route will be http localhost 3001 here you can call api v1 auth service this is to hit the auth service now if i want to hit the restaurant service or any of the particular service i will just change the base path this is card service right so this is the advantage i wanted to take by exposing only single endpoint and then just changing the base path we have these middlewares cart middleware delivery middleware order middleware and the restaurant service here you can see whenever you are hitting restaurant service it is going to forward this request to 3003 where restaurant service is running right we already have the mapping i created this mapping and added in the readme file also so you can see proxy 3001 so when i hit 3000 local 3001 api v1 restaurant service it will forward this request to 3003 where the actual APIs are running for the restaurant and currently I think I'm running all these services this is proxy here in proxy you can see this thing that this proxy created because we are using these proxy middleware right so whenever you are hitting an API v1 card service this will go here API v1 auth service this will take you here API v1 order service this will take you here that's just a simple setup nothing much fancy and we can also try running this 
so this is where our proxy service is running 3001 when i do health it is going to return me okay this is our restaurant service this is our proxy service and i can get the users and all these things so let's say if i want to get all the users i think there is a users api currently it will say unauthorized because unauthorized because we are not passing the authorization header here when we start passing it then authorization header will be forwarded and then we can validate uh, if the, the request is valid i mean all the authorization token is valid whatever you are passing then it will return as the user similarly you will change the base path here you will just pass the path which you want the the restaurant service so you can see restaurants this is like giving you the list of all the restaurant right so what we will do we will just do the login and then we will get the token we will add an authorization header and we will try this uh, apis so there can be uh, multiple proxies so let's say if i want to create a duplicate for this so we have order service we have delivery service and then we have cart delivery order service also we need so i will create an order service this is my order service so inside order service you will just place order here inside delivery you will place uh, only delivery here and this is health check endpoint we are hitting right now the health check endpoint and we need to start these applications also so how we are starting you can go to this uh, nx console and all of these applications are running on different port so we won't see any conflict delivery service cart service order service all these independent services are running hi everyone and welcome back so what we are going to do here is we are going to focus more on the ui and here we are going to add uh, login with google because uh, these days i mean not these days it was implemented a lot here a lot of not many year ago i remember i did the sign in with the google integration six years ago right because nobody wants to enter username password and now for the sign in and login there are many mechanisms available not even just using social providers there is a whatsapp web login is also available otp less web login is available so here what we are going to do in this video is we will try to understand how it works let's say you have a front end app is in the react and next js we are going to hit a nest js endpoint this user service is inside a nest js right and here let's say it is going to hit an endpoint uh, which looks something like this so it's going to hit the local host so api api v1 auth google right so let's say we integrated with the google provider what will it will do is it already has a google app configured it is using passport module for that passport passport jwt and passport auth google v2 there is some module name which we are going to use okay so these are the different uh, modules we are going to use with this nest.js service so when you hit this particular get endpoint what it will do it will check okay this is endpoints i need to get a consent from the user so i need to present a google login screen so what it will do is it will take you to simple google login screen your google accounts it will show you because now it's all handling by google so this is like google authentication service it will present you the consent screen okay do you want to log in with your existing uh, google accounts hello demo at the gmail.com what it will give you is you already have configured your application on the google app console so uh, how we are configuring our applications that i can show you so here you can see client app id like swiggy clone is my application and i have created one application here and these are my client id and the client secret so you need to configure okay what is your origin like i'm going to hit it from the local host 3002 and what is your callback url this is my callback url http without s and this is my client id and the secret id 
and so while configuring this uh, uh, google uh, oauth passport at the server side you need a client id client secret and the redirect uri so this is the redirect uri we need so what we are doing now is so it will present you the google consent screen when you say okay login with this account then what you are saying is i'm giving you the consent to access my data for this particular application which this uh, system admin this admin who built this application has registered on the google console so you have you by clicking on consent has given a consent to the google okay share my information to the service so this service google consent will give the data back to this particular service our service and now we have the data right and it will redirect us to a particular url so because google already has the redirect url uh, name once you give the consent it will take you to the let's say redirect url is api v1 auth google callback right and on this endpoint what we can do is we can return we can handle this callback endpoint in the nest.js application and extract the the user information check in our database this email exists otherwise create this with some dummy password some uuid password and return the token to the end user because he is not going to use that email for just username password he doesn't have the password he's just using the google authentication to uh, log in in our system but we can also store that user in our system that depends on us how we are doing it because all the other apis we are hitting based on our token we are not using the token which is returned by the google so we we are just checking okay you have the google account i got your data in my apis i will check okay this email exists otherwise i will create the user and then based on the user id based on the user id which i have created in the database and the email i will create my own token and i will return that token to the front end and all these things are happening with the google auth provider all the interactions are happening that similarly you can do this is like auth flow right this is the authorization server which is authorizing which is doing the author, uh, authorization of the user taking the consent and returning the token now we have our own resource server here we have our restaurant apis our own apis this is like our resource server now with this token you can hit our apis and this is our own token because we are customizing this implementation we are just checking okay user account exists and google has given us consent to use the credentials use the user data that means user has the google account we got the email we will create the user if doesn't exist generate a token send a token to the ui now you we will set this token inside a cookies that's the only the best way of doing it so this data is available in the cookies now front end will go front end has got the cookies data then the front end will send that cookies uh, with the authorization header and then it will hit our apis currently we are just uh, because we can extract the cookies in the client side and then that same cookie we can send in just the http headers it depends on us how we want to send and how we want to extract the data at the apis at the api at the api level you can extract the authorization header from the cookies or you can extract the authorization header from the http headers you don't need to even look at the cookies and that depends on how we are sending from the client side it's only like how we receive first once we receive it then we can start sending it through the http headers or just through the simply cookies but at the api level then we need to know no okay extract from the headers or extract from the request cookies okay so this is a simple auth flow we are going to implement uh, and we are going to enable login with the google google provider in our api so we already have our auth service we are not totally dependent on the google provider we are synchronizing that user also with our apis and we are doing lot of custom implementation on top of that okay like if you do the login with the firebase it's totally independent right you get the login you get the screen and then it will redirect you to the page i mean it has its own callback uh, to capture the user data return from the firebase okay let's build this and let's see how it is working uh, with our apis okay so let's build uh, authentication with the google here I, I will create a google controller what this controller will do is simply 
define our endpoints so i will copy some of my auth controller and i will change it for the google controller we are not going to have so many apis so here it is going to have a controller which is we will call it as a auth google and then we will define all the other methods so it's like uh, export class google controller and we can just keep only one method and update the rest i'm being lazy for now so what i will do is so constructor we are going to import a auth service we are going to inject auth service here auth service i guess yeah this is the auth service remove the these details which we don't need okay now simply we will just create a get method and uh, this get method is simply a simply method async async google auth and what this method will do is it is going to handle our request for so whenever you hit this request from the front end auth google right it will take us to the google consent screen so here we need to use auth guard use guard and we are going to create a guard for it so google auth this is you don't need to implement anything here because this is going to be handled by google consent here you can access you can pass the request object okay this is like existing implementation provided in the documentation i will import this from the common and then there will be a redirect url so it will take the google consent and then a google redirect you to some url so it depends on what url we have provided we have provided callback so i will be handling that callback here we will be adding the so google auth redirect here we are going to handle the redirection and here so let's do to be done right we will do what needs to be done here so this is our simple controller now when you restart your application what all things you need to do you just need to hit the api v1 auth you will hit api v1 auth google what it will do is it will hit this url and it will take you to the google console screen so here we are going to add a auth guard for it so google let's add the auth guard in the strategy first so what we need to do is google auth guard here we can add it oh, there are so many typos okay google auth guard dot ts and what we are going to add inside a google auth guard simply this is an injectable service and it is going to be simply export class because it will be attached to a google auth strategy google auth guard this is extends auth guard of the nest js and it is saying okay, okay use the google auth strategy for it simple now we need to build the google auth strategy inside our strategies so create a new file google jwt google auth strategy dot ts and what this auth strategy will do is it is again an injectable class we can you can use a existing auth strategy like uh, access jwt token strategy here what we need to change is this strategy argument the second argument will be okay here the second argument will be strategy and google okay so here we are can just simply write an injectable class okay 
okay i'm just checking the the docs how we are writing the simple auth strategy so it's a google auth strategy which is going to extend passport strategy passport strategy and it will take an argument right so what is a strategy it is going to get the strategy and profile this is the module we are going to use so this is the strategy we are going to use and the strategy name is google so whenever you use auth guard it will use this strategy and inside a constructor we can see here same logic we are going to implement but here the, i think the configurations will be different so auth service we can integrate config service this config service will work differently here because what we are doing is this config service requires a different set of parameters it is all we are going to use a auth client id auth secret and a google auth callback for this and we will import this from the eats config i already have these variables inside our uh, config module in our config package inside google we have three variables google client id client secret and the auth callback url and once everything is good we will just do a sync validate this is the method that will give you all the other required values okay access token refresh token and the profile and here you can return simply so whatever you are going to return from here that will get added to your request object so from this google auth we are going to get id name and emails these are the properties you are going to get from the profile and you can return this data which it gets added because this is the auth strategy same as jwt access jwt strategy we were extracting some data using validate method and this data gets added to the request dot user after this auth guard uh, gets executed so here we can just use this google auth guard google auth guard right and this is the callback where our application will redirect us back so here we can just check what we are getting inside a request.user console.log request.user and what i'm doing here is because we got the data from the auth from the google auth user has done the consent and google is going to redirect us to the api v1 uh, api v1 uh, auth google callback and gives us the request object inside request object we already have this user which is coming from this auth strategy because we are returning these value values uh, through the auth guard so what we are doing if you see the flow it will trigger auth guard auth guard is saying okay use the google auth strategy auth strategy named google it will come here we are already initializing our uh, mechanism of initializing the google uh, server side app use passing client id secret and callback url it will once you get the consent it will validate and it will return this data to our redirect callback url so this is what the auth guard is doing and once the because once the consent is given google will send us request back to the callback url and that callback url is nothing but api v1 auth google callback and here we will get the request.user so what we will do here is we can hit our own internal method return this dot auth service dot create a google token and we can pass underscore request dot user because these user attributes are different than what we are using in our api system so because if you see what we are returning we are returning provider name username i will use the email property also which is same as the email so name is given name username and email is both are same property this can be an interface okay this interface we are getting the data here inside request.user and create google token what it is doing it is checking that this email does exist in our system if yes uh if yes don't create it otherwise we need to create this user you can also do something like this okay we have created a user object 
okay let's save the user so if it is null then we get the saved user object i mean we are checking if this email exists in database if no we will create and we will just override the saved user property and then we are going to create uh, the token saved user dot id saved user dot email with these properties because now we have we are creating our own token not the token provided by google and we are just creating a access token and refresh token i'm just trying to log that in and we are returning it so let's simply play with this thing i already populated these client id and secret in my env here these are the three parameters auth client id auth client secret and auth redirect url i already configured these in my package also if you see my config service i don't need to talk about this because we are doing it many times like elastic configurations auth configuration similarly the google configurations we are getting these from these three environment variables and then this config package we are using in our user service in this domain uh, here we are initializing we are we are receiving all the properties here we are validating and then we have received a user object inside our controller we should be getting the request.user now let's play with this i will start my application the only additional thing which we have already added is this passport google auth 20 this is the package name which i have added additionally for getting the profile and the strategy so we will start this application again okay why it is creating a problem okay google controller let's see there are some build errors so inside our where it is problem auth module okay this is google controller and this strategy is i think file name is not correct google jwt strategy and this google controller we need to add here now everything is good our application is starting uh, up now what i will do is i will go to the login sorry http localhost 3000 to api v1 auth google right what it will do is it is redirecting me to the the google auth consent because it is first it is checking your credentials client id secret id and the redirect url matches with whatever you have configured here so be careful this is your origin like from where you are sending the request your correct auth callback url whatever you are passing in the env should be reflecting here and your client id and a secret id now i will just say okay login with this then what actually happened is once you did the consent it hits my this callback url which we have inside a google controller it entered here and it is executing auth guard auth guard is using this strategy and i can see after doing validate i got the profile object so we got the id name email inside the profile so here you can see and once this auth guard is triggered this auth strategy has executed now this controller here we got the request.user which contains email username name e username and email is same as we have configured it and then we got the the name uid and all these properties we are going to have our own user id so what we are doing is we are checking if this user exists in our system not sure if it is there otherwise we are going to create our own user and then this is the uid saved user dot id this is the uuid that means we populated the data in our system we got the access token and refresh token uh, from this api response now we need to find a way how we are going to deal with this i mean the proper way of doing it is storing these access token and secret token in the cookies because we cannot return something raw for the front end route because front end needs to capture this once we are returning these tokens so here uh, we can just use the cookies and inside the cookies we can set our jwt token and we will send that in the response back so this is the end to end flow this is how this will work if you are logging in with a different google account we will check and every time when you are doing a login because you don't have the password 
so again you will just log in with the google and we will check okay user already exists with this email don't create a new user just return a token so here we have done the custom implementation we are checking user doesn't exist that's fine create it otherwise skip it and then create a token again through our own jwt service and return the access token and the refresh token back to the the, the response so these tokens we are going to send in the cookies i will try to explain uh, what we have done here we are getting this response so we are getting the access token and the refresh token from this create google token you can see this is the payload we are returning right access token and the refresh token and this is our controller so request and the response that is coming from nest js common package and this is how we can set the cookies and we are setting the cookies for the access token and the refresh token and there are multiple parameters we can pass uh, http only same site uh, and all the other attributes to make our cookies is secure enough right so access token refresh token response we are setting these is the property and these are the options and then finally response dot send here you should not be just doing okay return because here we are using request and response explicit so you have to do response dot cookies response dot send this is the only way uh, you will get the response back at the client side okay so let's play with this thing here we will do the consent and then it will send a redirect back and then we will just check what cookies we have so we are sending access token and the refresh token and i can see this refresh token and access token these are the two cookies set for the http only these are secure same site and uh, we can also set the expiry of these tokens and this is the value and the domain is localhost because we set this for the localhost we can set it for the first particular domain so now whatever the interactions we are going to do now then we can set this we can send this cookies to the server or we have these cookies at the client head also we extract that and then send those cookies in the http header or we change our implementation at the api side to extract not from http headers extract the jwt token from the cookies okay there are many ways of doing it so this is how our login with google works right we will just keep it this code i will just commit this is how it is working the end to end uh, implementation now what we are going to do we will work on our front end landing page and we will we just need to revamp it with the login and the sign up and we also need to provide a login with the google button right so this is what we are going to do we have the google controller that has been added in the auth module then we are receiving the token at the client side so it's uh, it's only hitting the api this is the api url if you see api v1 auth google callback but this 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 endpoint is enough to set the cookies at the client side 